Hey there, welcome to CT Collectibles AMC. Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to let you know that I am not dead. Sorry, I've been out for a little while here. Had that uh, that virus thing that's going around and did not have the energy for a, a lot of this stuff here. So um, although I sound uh, a bit off still, I uh, I look great. And that's really the most important thing if you're going to do this kind of stuff here. So no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, we'll try and get back into it, ease ourselves back into this and uh, get back to the, uh, the, the fun stuff here. So We'll do a little of the uh, buy or sell over the past week. Who did well on the baseball diamond? Uh, do a few of those. Uh, no Tommy today, so I'm going to ask for your help. I've got uh, I've got a few names here with a question for each. Leave it in the comments if uh, if you would like, and we'll uh, we'll have some fun here. So let's start off with a few players who had some good weeks on the actual diamond, and see what we see here. Manny Margot, uh, probably your player of the week here. So he had a 500 average with a 451 BABIP, struck, you know, walked a few times, struck out very little, but he hit his first three home runs of the season, good for a 1500 OPS plus and a 370 weighted runs created. Now, for the season, he's hitting 337 with a 900 OPS, and again, those are the first three home runs of the season. If you take those numbers and you apply them, that 900 OPS, uh, 175 weighted runs created, um, that puts him into, you know, last year's numbers at least you know top seven or eight type outfielder so now not looking for him to maintain this over the course of a full season but the rays are they going to be able to work their magic for mr margot and can he finish as a top 15 outfielder in 2022 i think he's on the track there's some really good names in that uh in that conversation here so i'm not sure that he quite gets there but i'd like to hear what you have to say about that all right mr rowdy teles had himself a week 321 average with three home runs, 1100 R OPS, and 12 RBI. So I think he had like seven or eight in one game. It was just insane. So 200 plus weight of runs created. So he's uh, he's finding uh, finding a little bit of magic in Milwaukee. Uh, not his Milwaukee jersey here, but I like this picture better because ready to go. So uh, 258 average for the season. Now his walk rate uh, a little bit lower than you'd like for kind of that elite level stuff that strikeout rate. You know, it's serviceable for someone who's going to hit kind of 30, 40 home runs. So uh, he's on the pace here, 888 OPS, which is uh, good. Um, not not elite or anything like that. So you're kind of the you know kind of a league average guy who had a really really hot streak here. 147 weighted runs created. Says, you know that that bat's actually pretty elite here. So there's a few things that are showing you know really really good plate presence. Uh, a few things that are saying eh, this is maybe not the uh, the elite level guy that we're we're looking for here. But that RBI total is huge. And so the burning question that we have for Rowdy Telez with all those uh, conflicting stats here is, could he kick your butt in farming? So I will say he probably could. Look at that. He just seems ready to go. So you let me know what you think. All right, Manny Machado, off to a terrific start this season. He's everything that uh, he's supposed to be here, right? So, all right, 420.89 average for the week here. Three home runs, 1,300 OPS, nearly 300 weighted runs created. So he's an elite-level run producer. Uh, for the season, he's hitting 381 with a 424. Babip, his walk rate, walk rate, strikeout rate, kind of in line with what he's done for his career. He's really a tremendous plate presence guy. Uh, seven home runs, 1,000 OPS, and uh, 211 weight runs created. This is MVP level stuff. We know that there's some regression coming at, at a certain point, but if it doesn't come in for a while, and these things, they don't necessarily regress fully during the season. You know, it's kind of a between season thing here. So um, if he's able to keep going for a little while at this high level, that, that number's banked. And he could have some elevated stats here. Manny Machado, his best career finish in MVP voting is third. Third, Can he crack that top two? That'd be his highest finish this year. So that's the question I have for Manny Machado right now. The best player in the game. He'd have to be your MVP as it stands right now. Can he keep it going and maintain enough to finish in that top two? So we'll see how that uh, shakes up. A tremendous season for Manny Machado. Bonus question. All right. Could he crack 30 stolen bases if he didn't wear that giant chain? So this thing is huge. And if he's running around on those base paths, I gotta imagine it weighs him down a little bit. You know, if he removed that, could he get uh, get his speed increased to the point where he could steal 30 bases? And I think that would seal the deal. So we we'll shall we we'll shall see. All right, wrap it up here with Merrill Kelly. I don't think a lot of people had him on their radar coming into the season. I picked him up for some of my fantasy teams, and it's working out. But I even I didn't expect this. So last week he had a win. He had eight strikeouts, a couple of walks. Left, left uh, you know, for the season. Let's just jump down to the season here. So, you know, one week sample size. You know, it's fun, but you know, for the season. Three wins. He's striking out a little over eight, walking two, so it's scant. Um, that's a pretty productive pitcher. 
87% of the people that get on base stay there. That is high. He's more of a low 70s left on base percentage guy. League average closer to 75 or 80% here. Batting average on ball and play, 279 for the season. He's kind of a higher BABIP guy. So uh, these are with this is within reason. He's getting a little lucky here. You can see the ERA at 1.22 is XFIP pitching closer at a 3.33 level. Uh, all things being equal, so this is probably where the regression happens. But I don't think anybody had him as a as a top five pitcher coming into the season. Can he finish there? So right now he's he's kind of looking like it. So can he keep it going? If we have this regression, then he's probably not there. So I think he finishes just outside that. But what do you think? So all right, hey, good to be back. Thanks for sticking with me here. I will try and get back on somewhat of a regular schedule here. Hope everything is well. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye now.